Hello everyone, what's good? Welcome to the Creative Expressions. My name is Dayo Fagulu, Adi Dayo Fagulu to be precise, and I'm excited to be part of the Creative Expressions 2022. You know, and I was thinking about it, I was like, how can I make this conference probably one of the best conferences you've ever attended before? And I decided I don't want it to be one of those conferences where, you know, you attend it and like five minutes after every single thing has gone over your head. So we're going to make it a fun class, more of a conversation. But in this conversation, I'll be the talker and you guys will be doing most of the listening to be precise. So today I've been giving the topic of the art of the spoken word. This is the first time I've actually ever been asked to talk about spoken word before in my entire life. And I thought to myself, how can I make this as easy as possible? And how can I make parents understand like what it means to be able to get their kids in that space of understanding what spoken word means and how they can thrive if they have, you know, the creativity for it. All right. First things first, I'm going to start off by first defining what art is. Art is pretty much you know, various branches of creative activity from literature to art to music to dance. But it also goes over that. Like, it's also such an abstract term. Like, when you think about the whole concept of abstract, it's weird because nowadays, even when we look at, you know, the kind of art they're making, it doesn't make sense. But to another person, it evokes different types of emotions and it's it's beautiful to them. So I'll, I'll first all start off by talking about what spoken word is. Spoken word is actually a catch-all that stems from, you know, things like different kinds of poetry, like sonnets to limericks to ballads. And the interesting thing is it actually stems from poetry readings, poetry slams, jazz poetry, and hip-hop music. And it's funny how I actually realized this a few days back because I was thinking, oh, how did I even start off by, how did I start off like doing spoken word? And I found that a lot of my background was based off of you know hip hop and art and whatnot and also i was like i was just thinking about how i can explain it in such a way because i don't have any kids of my own so i was like how can i explain it to the parents so that they can understand it so i just looked back at my my life as a kid and how like all these various things were just you know formed and embedded in me and i know the question that a lot of parents have is like is my child creative yes your child is creative like without a doubt like every the funny thing is every child is born creative most most people have this misconception about creativity and talent in itself so talent is you just having a natural inclination to be able to do something easily as opposed to creativity which is something everyone is born with and i'm the kind of person that typically likes to do my research so research was done on like a a thousand six hundred kids within the ages of four to five and you know they realized that these kids, 98% of these kids actually had the creative genius imagination. And then they did the same test on those kids five years after. So they're about like 10. And they find out that 30% of these kids are like, are still at that same level. And then they tested these kids five years later at the age of 15 and only 12% of those kids were actually able to think imaginatively. So the question is, what can we do about this? How can we keep our kids in a space whereby their creativity is able to thrive? And I'm just, I just have a short thing here. It says, it's a common misconception that creativity is an inborn talent, which means either the kids have it or they don't. But it isn't true. It might just surprise you as a parent that their perception is often way more creative than you think. In fact, they might come up with some innovative ideas to make the world more futuristic than any adults would dare to dream of. Creative intelligence and its importance is based on out-of-the-box thinking or going beyond thinking about the obvious things that we're often presented with. To make it happen, they need some peaceful time away from their digital gadgets, iPads, iPhones, (laughs) which is a little tough these days. You can make your child think out of the box by engaging with them in creative games and activities. So I was like, let me just explain to you guys in a way of how I like how I just pretty much started this journey of creative thinking and creative thought and creative pattern. Um, To be honest, I kind of got a head start. I'm not even going to lie. I got a head start at this whole like creative thing. So I was coming from a house whereby like my my dad is just like artsy in every single thing and when i mean artsy like i'm not he's actually one of the most artistic people i've ever met um he can paint he can draw he can 
make clothes he he has like this understanding of architectural designing he he's just he just has this inclination to just do things properly like and it's it's very intimidating when you have a dad like that and i just i my, my mom as well too she's the kind of person where like oh she unknown to her she's an amazing writer and just growing up in that space whereby like we were exposed to art at a very young age just made us like it, it, it was just a thing where we were just in that natural environment and it was easy for us to just thrive in that aspect it, it, we also grew up in a house where like music was so heavy for us so that was also like the stem and foundation towards like learning how to like rap and like just do all these different things all right like let me not bore you guys with just stories and stories but i still have more stories coming up and i decided what 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 are a few points that i can bring to the table to just make parents understand how how like not just in the concept or the art of spoken word but how we can just bring you know our kids into a space where their creativity can thrive because i find that oftentimes some people are trying to cultivate that creativity but the truth is you can only just let it thrive in its natural environment there's really nothing much you can do to you know i don't want to use the word to enhance it but like there's really nothing much you can do you know to just change certain things about their creativity but you can put them in a space whereby it just thrives much more easily so the first thing i put here is non-creative behavior is actually learned as we grow older we lose our creativity for one reason or the other um a perfect example was when i was i think i was 14 and I was trying to learn I, I was trying to learn f- um th- there's this popular piece by Beethoven called for Elise and I was trying to learn that and I took my sister's grade book and it took me like what a couple of days to learn it as opposed to now that I I'm I'm much older like every time I would try and play a music piece it'll take me like much a much much longer time because I'm not able to you know imagine things the way I used to so the first thing I put here is let them explore their natural environment and let them thrive oh my days this is is the best part um about exploring their natural environment so i remember the first time um in high school (laughs) this story is so funny because i think in a way it somehow stems from how i i started putting words together as a kid i remember in high school my older sister amazing singer amazing um rapper as well amazing personality just an amazing person in general they were gonna have a rap battle in school and she was she was three years older than me and she was gonna go against someone that was a year older than her like so I, I you know I was looking forward to that day and to that event right and she battles this guy and to be honest it's high school right she didn't have to say too much I remember her words were like, you ain't got the flow, you ain't got the show. And like the whole, like everybody in my class, you know, they just started screaming. They were like, yo, your sister is such a good rapper. And for high school students that time, it was mad. But me, I knew it was whack. And so, you know, after that, like I just kind of got this. Everyone just expected me to also be like my sister in the sense that they were like, oh, Diane, I'm sure you can rap like your sister too. And that was how like, you know, after like a few weeks after a whole bunch of dudes in my class just called me and they're like, oh, yo. Dad, come and drop some bars from us. And Dad, if you're watching this, please forgive me. So that time I had just watched like some like some stuff from like MTV Bays and like Kanye and like that kind of thing. So I, I had some lyrics in my head and I just repeated the exact same thing. And you know, that was how everyone was like, oh, yo, Dad, you're such a good rapper. Dad, you're such a crazy rapper. It's fire, it's fire. And like, okay, sorry, there was no word like fire back then, but everyone just thought it was like really good. And from there, I would just have a whole bunch of people that would just call me from time to time to just come and rap like and we'll just do like freestyle battles and everything like that and eventually in high school I I got to a point whereby like I just ended up joining like this rap group I mean if you were it was either you were in a rap group and cool or you were not in a rap group and I was I just happened to be in a rap group for a bit and it was a it was it was a good experience and a good learning like environment just naturally so it just shows how like my parents didn't really have to do too much even in my school setting so you don't know what your kids are doing in school but please don't put a camera in their backpacks (laughs) let them just thrive in that natural environment Um, Another thing I helped was also like public speaking in school too as well. Um, I was in a place where like we would do public speaking. Each class in each grade had to do like public speaking here and there. And it was just a thing where I had to speak often and, and it also helped. And I was exposed to, you know, 
just learning how to speak in front of crowds and in front of people. And I think another thing that was that also played a part was like doing stuff in church as well too um, because like my faith also plays a big part in 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 even my spoken word and the kind of things I write and I realized that um I remember one time my I was I was like nine right and my mom gets a call the night before Sunday service and they're like oh yo Daya has can Daya learn the lines to Psalm 91 and I'm a nine-year-old kid and I'm just like yo I have to cram these lines and I'm not going to lie to you guys. I think I pretty much, I messed up the lines. But the point I'm trying to make was that it was also a natural space whereby I was able to just, you know, just like thrive in what I could already do, right? And my parents just let me do those things without like, you know, being a hindrance to it. So like just let them thrive in, in, in every opportunity they're giving, whether it means them joining a debate club or it means them like speaking up in a place you know just in all those different aspects they're able to build their skills and build their like spoken word skills another thing i have is letting go of gadgets and letting go of gadgets and devices okay i don't know what it's like to be an apparent in the a parent in 21st century but i i've i've realized that like a whole bunch of kids are typically always on their iphones or their ipads as opposed to like reading a book being exposed to you know quality poetry or quality just quality things like books like from or or maybe even listening to a spoken word from like popular artists like uh, amanda gorman or maybe maya angelou right and these kind of exposures actually build a, a person's it, it helps you think in a different way and there's something called divergent thinking and divergent thinking is quite rare these days uh and and one thing they've noticed in these times is that even though iqs are actually increasing people aren't able aren't able to actually apply you know a divergent thinking perspective into solving problems and this is where creative thinking actually comes into place um so divergent thinking just simply means like you're able to actually apply stuff practically as opposed to just having the theoretical knowledge right and creative creative thinkers are usually much more better at able to provide solutions in a concept whereby they can apply themselves practically uh so moving on to another important part is confidence and again these kids will gain confidence by actually when they're put in a place where they, they can just thrive naturally and if i'm being honest with you guys like till today i'm still like sometimes i'm I'm actually, I can, I can be, I can have like five minutes before my presentation and I have like sweaty palms. I'm just sweating and like, I'm nervous and everyone's like, oh yeah, die, you'll be fine. You'll do good. And then I always end up being fine. But I think a lot of it is also hinged on my faith too, as well, in the sense that like, I, I, I'm trusting that, that I will get the boldness, you know, to do it. And I just always, there's this thing that, that there's just, um, proverb i i like to think about it says see a man that's that's diligent in his ways who stand before kings and not mean men right someone that's actually diligent in their skills so it also means it's like me working on myself and building myself as well too um another thing reading 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 i mean if these kids are not on their on their kids are not on their gadgets or on their phones then then let them just be like let them read books and i know <laughs> i know that the truth is a lot of parents don't read and they're expecting their kids to be readers. Unfortunately, it, it, it makes it a bit much more harder. <laughs> my, my dad was a reader, but it took me a while to actually like really like books because there's this there's this saying, I'm not really a fan of it. And people say like, if you want to hide something from a black man, just put it in a book, which is really sad. And it just shows how like, I mean, that particular race they don't read as much so it's important that we're just getting our kids to read like i think reading has helped me just understand things in a perspective and in a way that like you know people won't typically think about it and i'm able to have more original ideas you know and, and i find that even when these kids let go of gadgets iphones they're actually able to think from an individualistic perspective as opposed to having that collective idea of how to do things and say things and work on things all right so moving on how do i know if my child is a good spoken word artist honestly you can never know that's the truth you can't <laughs> you you eventually just find out that you're good at it or you're not 
good at it. And and some of you here, I know that I'm, I'm talking to mostly um, uh, Nigerian parents, and I know that I don't know if it's still the same way, but like back then, like every Nigerian parent wanted their kid to be a doctor, a lawyer, what an engineer, and whatnot. But the truth is, like I, I mean, like your kid can thrive in pretty much any aspect, and everything that they've learned from when from like when they were younger it makes it easier for them to even apply those things into whatever they're going to be doing in the future there's something called uh they're called polymath people so polymath people are they're they're pretty much people that an example was jacob collier right they're pretty much people that can they have they have a like a streamlined knowledge of different things and they're able to apply it into their core their core career right and that's something that a creative thinker is able to do so just put them in that space where they're able to thrive and learn and learn and learn. Um, what else do I have to say about this, uh, about my journey as a spoken word artist? Oh, yeah. Still going back to my dad. Again, m- my dad, like he was, he is, sorry, I cor- let me correct myself. He He's pretty articulate, like in how he speaks, like his intonations, his pauses. It's not even about like his, it was never really about his accent, but just like how he would do things and just speak in itself. Like it, it just carried so much, so much like power and stuff. And I was like, yo, I want, I actually want to speak like that. So seeing that and just also like being exposed to that was also like another head start for me. So it really helped me. And what else can I say? again yeah put them in like debate clubs if they like it don't force them like just expose them to all these different things i think another thing that helped was i i i i i had like piano lessons as a kid so that was also a way to just build my my knowledge on you know on on music and and now it affects how i also do my spoken word like every time i have to write or every time i have to to write a spoken word i always have a track that i make or i build and another thing is um reading actually i i'm more of a more of an old i like i like old english when i write spoken words so you i'll typically find myself doing saying things like what what freedom from our bondage to decay like things that people won't typically use in their words and in their sentences but i find that because of my exposure to reading things like that it evokes some type of emotion in the crowd that won't that people won't typically have so again for me it's about the natural environment that's the major thing that's the most important thing and again just let your kids thrive just let your kids thrive in that natural environment that's the 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 the, the, you know the the take-home note for everyone today It was such an amazing time, uh, you know, just talking about this. I hope you guys got a thing or two. Uh, Can't wait to see you. Don't know where I'm going to see you guys. Maybe on the streets of Lagos when I'm in Nigeria or something. I don't know, but I had an amazing time. Hope you guys did. All right. Bye, guys. Take care.